Good day, everyone. Ray from Ferg TV. I'm glad you could stop by. Got a little project I'm going to do today, so I figured I would uh, put it out there so you could see. And I don't know, maybe it'll, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you already know how to do this. I don't know. What I'm going to do is take this countertop. We've got a couple of issues going on here. First of all, this um, edging fits into a groove right here. It was pulled out and uh, not all the way like that, but pulled out of the corner and whatnot. It's typical for this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna fix that. The issue that we have is this overhang right here. Put a little light on that. This overhang we have right here hangs out a little bit too far when that slide out comes in from my buddy to, uh, this is not my camper, I'm doing this for a friend. And um, actually his name's Woody, but not that Woody, a different Woody, my friend. So anyway, uh, when that slide out comes in and it probably comes in about in here somewhere, it makes it too tight for them to, uh, to walk through here comfortably. They really have to squeeze through. So they asked me if I could trim this back so that they'd have more room. Now, I know they're gonna lose a little countertop, they're okay with that, but I thought, why don't I cut this and put a uh, piano hinge on it and let it come down and you know put a brace here that you'd turn out and hold it up. It's just not worth it. I mean, it's inches. And uh, the inches that we'll take off will be perfect for them to walk through. And you're really not gonna gain anything here. So the way that I'm gonna go about this is I'm gonna remove the rest of this nosing. You can hear the heater running. It's actually cold in this uh, RV. It's not bad outside, I got the door open. But it's warming up out there, but you know how it is, they, they don't warm up in here real quick. Although it's getting nice now to the point where I can probably shut that heat off. But what I'm gonna do is remove that edging, then I'm going to take a piece of plywood, make a template out of it, and I think we're going to like round the corner here, come kind of straight across here, and then round it back over there. And then I'll probably have to, uh, well, I'll definitely have to regroove this area, which I have a bit to do that. And then um, the process will be this simple. I'll make that template. I'll be happy with it. If I'm good with it, then I'm going to just put a piece of tape on here, trace my line that I want from the template. But we know that when I cut, or I know when I cut, I'm going to be over that line a little bit. So I'll make sure I adjust it properly. But I'll take a jigsaw, and I have a downward blade that won't chip the uh, laminate. And I will cut out past that because I don't want to take my router, which I'm going to take and put on here and cut all of this material off. I just want to take off like a, an eighth to a quarter of an inch of material with the router. And it, they ride with a guide bushing on that template. That's pretty much what's going to happen here. So I'm going to uh, set you up on the uh, tripod here and you can get a bird's eye view of what's going to happen. Okay, now that we're set up, we can take off the rest of, of this nosing. What you see, it just pulls right out. So the next thing to do will be to create this. And then it'll get clamped on when I run the router. And I've got room outside there to clamp this thing on. So I rounded up some tools, and here's where we're at. I'll bring you up to speed. I got this adjustable square, <coughs> T-square, <coughs> and I think that's going to be able to create my angle going across here. My problem finding it is how do I get a straight line to run with this? I, I want it to be parallel, and I thought, if I take a measurement from that wall under the counter out to the edge of the cabinet and then transfer that over here on top on both of them, then I would have my, my line to work off of to be parallel and they're not the same. This one's 39 and a half. That one I'm sure of because I can measure it from the wall right to the edge of the cabinet. But this one, when I do it at 39 and a half, which was right here, and you eyeball it, 
it's back. So the cabinet is, is not completely parallel with the wall, which is fine. And it's not out by much. It's 39 and 7 eighths, the closest that I can see. So I've come up with two uh, stops to hold my um, template in place simply for the mocking uh, purpose, which they can stay on after to help secure things, but I'm going to be clamping, clamping it. So I've got to remove this one because it's in the way to put my T-square. So I did put a clamp on that area. And then I put a couple of lineup marks on these so that they'll go right back to that same spot each time. As long as I don't move this, we should be in pretty good shape. So now you know what I know. See, this has to come across here and it would be in the way of that, uh, well, that block would be in the way of this. It'd actually be a block. All right, so I tell you, I'm close right there. I'm off. You can't see it, but I'm only off about a maybe an eighth at the most. So we're going to change the angle on this. Okay, right there. Oops. Right there. I feel like we're in we're in line with the side of the cabinet. So now, how much do we want to move it out to leave as an overhang? That's the next question. So what are they running on the cabinet? About an inch. So if we carried that thought process right through and we went an inch and an inch. That would be where I'm going to end up. But now we got to remember that, and it, this isn't even going to matter because this overhangs so much anyway. And maybe I want to go more than that. Maybe I want to go more than that because they only need a few inches to clear. And the farther I go out and cut, the more countertop I give them. Well, I don't even think that means anything. So let, let's just do it a little bigger over here. Let's go an inch and a half. Inch and a half. And did that carry through? It certainly did. All right, so... The only reason this is here is just so I can get a line. Now we're going to eyeball it and see if that looks like it's running with this cabinet. I'll tell you, it's so hard to tell. It almost looks like it's going back. So how could I do this? Here's all I need. I knew it would come to me sooner or later. So that is in line with the cabinet. So we're just gonna put a line right here. And this is just something I can follow. Well, actually, let's do it back here where the cabinet line is. Right there. And then we'll do the same over here. Okay. Right there. Now, if I take a measurement, this would prove me right or wrong. So th this, this mock I made here and there should be equal to the edge of the, of the cabinet. And it's about 1 and 7 sixteenths right there. Just a little over. Just under a half. One and a half. And this one, you know what? We did all right. Okay, it's just an illusion. Just an illusion. Okay, now with that... Here, that is where we're going to cut that outside. I need a couple of radiuses. So I need a line coming across there. Let's clamp this so it don't move. Actually, we can go back to this now. Now that I drew my line. Put that on there. This doesn't move. Get that out of the way. And then... What I want to do is bring my line up over here, but I am not, what 
I do that, I'm already into a radius. So how are we going to perform that miracle? It's, you know, when you're working with straight edges, it's one thing, but when everything's angles or radiuses, angles are easier, radiuses are more difficult, then how do I find out where I am right here in relationship to that? I mean, I can obviously I can trace this underneath. I wonder if I need to make two cuts. If I trace this underneath, go cut it out, put this back on, and then I can find out exactly where I am up here. Although this is my this is my point right here. If I draw that line across there, I think we can do this. I think we can simplify it. <laughs> yeah, let's see. All right, let's take this right out and just use this as a straight edge. So all we're going to do, if I go to this side, you can probably see what I'm doing, is I'm just going to connect those two points, which are the cabinet side out here. That's where the cabinet side is. So I now know where the cabinet is underneath here. Now, getting my lines to come out here so that I know exactly where I am, that's the next thing. So how are we going to do that? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Keep that out of the way for a second. What if we did this? Okay. Now that's not the side, that's the countertop, which that's actually what I want, I think. Because it comes back out and then goes this way, but I don't really want it to go that way. I want to cut this off. So if that goes there, then this one, let's put a clamp on this so it don't move. It's important that things stay where they are. Because I gotta unclamp the other side. So as long as I keep everything clamped, it should stay and I can get a reading on it. So if we take that out of there, and this, so now, does that help me at all? God save the queen. Oops. This mock right here, and then this. And carry that line up like this. Put that mock right on here. I got a mock right there. And keep those two ends in line. What happens when I do that? So what that's doing is it's helping us to follow the curve. So I just came up with a point right here where the curve comes around and the, and the, I see that that's incorrect though because I want to be out here. So do I want to do the same thing and be out here? Actually, it is kind of right there, isn't it? 
it is kind of right there. So the thought that I had, I got two different radiuses here. Let's see which one I like. I don't think that's going to do it. And neither is that. They're both too tight. I'll have to swing a, a radius on it as long as I can get a point to work off of, which I think is going to be right there. So I'm thinking that we kind of want to do something like this. So if I can measure back to here and back to there, I'd have two points to follow to create my radius. Let's see. Let's see. Three inches. I start there. Go there. I need to do this side first. We're going to use this as our mock out here. So that's in line with the countertop out there. Yep. And then this way, we'll do three back. Now, they're both going to be different, so it might come down to making them look good. Okay, if I put a clamp back over there. You'd say, ah, oh, it's pretty easy, and you know, I actually could have probably just freehanded it, and it might have been just fine. But I just wanted to make it right if I could. Let's take this one off. So now we're going to go back three from here. So now I bring this radius in right here and there. And the way that I'll do that flexible radius is I'm going to go get something that I can bend right around there. I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Okay, we're back. And this is what I got. My flexible self-centering ruler, which we're not using it for that. I took a clamp and I clamped it right here where the dot is, which is a reference of where the countertop is underneath. And this line, of course, is our cabinet. But it's... Let's see. Yeah, our cabinet is in line here, but back an inch. So the actual side of the cabinet is back in here somewhere. And that's important because we want the radius to be out past that, of course. See, and that's running close to that. I don't know that I want to do that. I think I got to get out farther when I do this radius. That's why I haven't cut anything yet. I'll move this one back again. not quite back to that point that I was at before, but I think I met enough where it will allow me to do this. Now that's what I was looking for. Okay. But I don't think that's going to work over here. Although it might. See, I need to get that to come off of that line. Well, no, actually, that line goes out over there. I just need to be to that point and then come back over here. So let's try this. Let's put this on here so it don't move. And then take this one and take it out of there. over here so you can see. Remember, if you can't see, you need to say something. So, what would that do for me? So, 
needs to be tight. Okay, see, that moved, but because it moved and I have a block there, I went right back to where it was. Okay. Not 100% with this side yet. I'm trying to get it right in my mind. So, this mock out here is the amount, same amount off of that cabinet. Same overhang. And then this one is our overhang that we want out here. All right? Yeah, so we need to connect that point to this point, but we don't want it going back like this. We want it coming back this way. And you can't see it, but what's happening is we're, we don't have a straight countertop coming out like this. The countertop comes and goes like this underneath. So if I'm not in the right spot, I'm going to miss. I'll be out too far. It won't connect proper. So if I go from here to there, I need to be in that general vicinity. See what we can do with that. All right. So this needs to just come in here. All right. And then this one needs to just simply come back like that a little bit and we'll make it. a good line there because we're going to go up and cut this out in the shop and that way I can I have a good sweeping radius that I can put that piece on and bend it around and from what I'm feeling underneath I'm past everywhere so the only thing I'm worried about here is I'm getting too close and yeah, I'm getting too close to that cabinet so that's not going to work. Uh, it's a great idea, dear, but it's not going to work because, again, you can't see this. Let me grab the other camera. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so as you can see, here's my dilemma. I can't come in here too far. So I th somehow I have to continue this radius right from right here over to, to this line, right, the line that's right up there. So what I just drew in there will not work. Now you have a little better idea what I'm talking about. So basically what we're saying is this thing needs to kind of go here. A tighter radius like this this other thing that I had in mind will not work get rid of that and then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath and I'm going to trace the cabinet line just so I have it for reference And that way I can take a look when I go to cut and see where I'm at in real time. All right. 
so I feel that this one will work. And now I feel that the other one will work. So we're gonna leave these two clamped here. I'm actually gonna put another clamp on there. So when I come back, I can put them right on those mocks and I'm right where I left off. I don't know. Oops. Move just a little bit. We're good though. Okay. Make sure we write top on this for reference. Okay. To the shop. You know, this might be a good time for you to take a second and give it the old up yours. Don't do it for me. Do it for you too. They love that sort of thing. Only if you think you're getting something out of this, you know, and maybe someday in the near future even, you might subscribe. Well, that's asking a lot. We'll see how it goes, all right? All right, I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. So now that we're up in the shop, I thought I would show you a little trick. Maybe I've shown it to you before. I don't remember. But um, because we're on an angle here, how do you cut this off? Because you can't run parallel. You got to run it on an angle. The way that you do that is you scab a piece on the top. And I'm going to just cut this quick because it's, it's got to be uh, parallel. So let's cut that. Get some suction going. So I just cut a little bit off just to make sure it was parallel. <sighs> so the next thing that we're going to do is we'll take this and put it right on the line that we want to cut. Okay, and the way that we're going to do it is with a pin nailer. It's got 5 8 pins in it, so they're just going to go through the, uh, the half inch plywood. You only need a couple, you just don't want it to move. And put three, it's a big piece. Okay, the next thing that you do, what did you do with my tape measure, man? Uh, God, I know where it is. The other one's outside on our project. Oh, there's my other one right there. This is kind of a construction one there. This one's a little better. We're doing some cabinet work. Okay, so, at 13 and a 16th. That means that blade will cut right on the side of that. And this isn't super critical, you know. It's not like it's brain surgery or anything. All right, we're gonna fire it up. We're gonna run this against here. I think we'll, you know, the right blade looks like it's at a good height. blade has stopped turning I can reach over you don't want to reach over when the blades turning whenever you can all right now we just have to separate this with a bar so as you can see this is the edge that ran against the fence this is the edge that I wanted cut we're right on that line, as you can see. Perfect, we're gonna have our angle that we want. And then we'll freehand the rest of it. But I wanted a straight line there. So this is the reason that we didn't use big pins. I wanted to be able to get it out without a major ordeal. We'll, we'll just take them out after. And then I can reuse that for something. So this is the template that we're creating to cut that countertop downstairs. So you can see, we're gonna put a little radius there, a little bigger radius over here. And the reason that I traced the underneath was I wanted to see where that line was 
in reference to here. And we're going to be just fine. We're going to be just fine. So I'm going to go to the bandsaw. Well, you know what? I'm going to go to the chop saw and take that off. I'm going to take that off. And then I'll cut the rest of it on the bandsaw. Let's go and do that. And normally I'd have my fence on here, but it's they're screwed to the back of my uh, auxiliary fence that I have. So we're just going to just snip this. And I need to follow that line. So this is just an eyeball thing here. And the way we're going to do it is we'll slide the saw, and if it hits at one point and then hits again at the other one, we're good. But it didn't. Okay. We're on the line out there, and we're on the line right there. Okay. So that's that piece, and then we'll cut our rate. Uh, yeah, we'll cut the radius right there. Good there. I think we're good. Tighten that down. Good. Okay. That's that. So we have this line. Oops. This line, this line, and now we've got to come out here and take that off and that off. So I'm just going to go over to the, to the uh, bandsaw and snip them. All right, let's do this. So we've got those two roughed in. They're close. They're within sanding amounts. And now we're going to sand them in. So let's go and do that. Okay, you know what? That's really good. We're going to take a hand block to it now and just get any of the little high spots out. All right. Good enough, let's go over and do that, and then we're going back down and we're gonna get ready to cut. Well, I, I think we're gonna end this one right here. We're gonna do it in two parts. It's just gonna to get too long. It's gonna bore the snot out of you. So you'll have to come back for part two where we actually do some work down in the, uh, in the trailer. So that's it for now. Hey, thanks for uh, stopping by and you know, this might be a good time to give it the old up yours. You know what I mean? It's like, don't do it for me. Do it for YouTube. They love that sort of thing. They live for it. This is their thing. They want this all the time. Up yours, up yours. So, so just, if you have a minute, if you could do that, muster up a little steam and just let her fly. And uh, everybody will be happy. So that's it for today. I'll see you next time on Ferg TV. Thanks for stopping by.